Agnieszka Kortlaszka was born in the summer of 1972 on the 15th of August, which was a Tuesday in Rochlaw, Poland. Although her parents didn't know it then, their daughter would go on to be the first Polish woman to be crowned Miss International. She would accomplish this at a relatively young age. In fact, as you will see, Agnieszka accomplished quite a lot and more than many people do throughout their entire lives in her short six years as an adult. In 1990, at the age of 17, Agnieszka began modeling and working on her pageantry career. During the autumn of 1990, she took part in a wedding dress show at Olauska Street. During this event, a 29-year-old man named Jerzy Luzuski took notice of her. Jersey was instantly attracted to Agnieszka and made it his mission to make her his. He found out her address and phone number and relentlessly pursued a relationship with her, pestering her about dates, but Agnieszka did not give him the time of day. For a time, Agnieszka viewed this man's demented obsession with her as a harmless crush, but for him, she was someone he had to possess. Being as beautiful, intelligent and poised as she was, in 1991, while studying at the Rochlaw University of Science and Technology, Agnieszka competed at and won the Miss Polski competition. Shortly before this event, she met Jaroslaw Swiatek, who would later become her husband, but was also an organizer of the Miss Lower Silesia pageant, which she had also won. Initially, actually, he has stated in interviews afterwards that he didn't want her for the title of Miss Lower Silesia, that he actually didn't think that she was right for it, but the other judges actually crowned her Miss Lower Silesia and they only got to know and like each other afterwards by spending lots of time together and traveling together of course as the title holder and organizer. After winning the Miss Polsky pageant on the 19th of July 1991, Agnieszka had only about 12 weeks to prepare for the Miss International pageant which was happening in the autumn of that same year. Miss International 1991 was the 31st edition of the pageant, which started in 1960. 51 contestants competed in this year and the pageant was held in Tokyo, Japan. At this point, Agnieszka's August birthday had passed eight weeks earlier and the brown-haired, green-eyed beauty was crowned Miss International 1991 on Sunday the 13th of October 1991 at the age of 19. As Miss International, of course, Agnieszka got many opportunities to travel all around the world and meet many important people in fashion. In fact, she eventually signed with the Ford Modeling Agency in New York City, all the while still dating Jaroslav Swiatek. After her reign as Miss International ended in the autumn of 1992 at the age of 20, Agnieszka married Jaroslav Swiatek and the pair lived in the United States for some time. Meanwhile, back in Poland, Jersey's obsession with Agnieszka was as unceasing as ever and instead of convincing him to give her up, news of her marriage to Swiatek enraged him and only fueled his obsession further. He allegedly later told police that by marrying someone else, she had ruined his life. Agnieszka, presumably still oblivious to the depths of Jersey's passion for her, continued to live her life and chase her dreams. She worked with some big names in fashion such as Calvin Klein and Ralph Lauren. Rumors even had it that she was Ralph Lauren's favorite. She had also featured in some big magazines such as Playboy, American Vogue, very famously um, Cosmopolitan, and she later on dropped Agnieszka and went under the model name Aga. In 1993, Agnieszka and her husband returned to her hometown of Rochlaw. Agnieszka soon gave birth to a baby girl, Patricia, and I suppose their decision to move back to Poland from busy New York was because they wanted to start a family in a safer place and closer to people from their own culture. Being a computer programmer at a bank, Jersey, who was 34 by this time, couldn't necessarily afford to follow Agnieszka all over the world. I can only imagine the dis 
disgusting joy and relief that he felt when he realized that Agnieszka was semi-permanently returning to their hometown. Just like all those years before, he found out her address, phone number and any other information he could get. Agnieszka, now a wife and mother, was cordial but ultimately dismissive of him. He became increasingly deranged, sending her letters, snooping around her property, but Agnieszka was probably too busy to notice exactly how dangerous this man's obsession has become, so she never told her husband about Jersey, only her mother. Even though Agnieszka and her family had moved to Poland and they were spending a considerable amount of time there, Agnieszka was still traveling a lot for work. In fact, she was traveling to New York many, many times and she was actually supposed to be on a doomed flight five weeks before she actually died. Agnieszka had a seat booked on the Trans World Airlines Flight 800 on July 17, 1996. For some reason, her husband insisted that she changed her itinerary. Uh, the Boeing 747, which was headed to Rome with a stopover in Paris, exploded and crashed into the Atlantic Ocean 12 minutes after taking off at the J.F. Kennedy Airport in New York. All 230 passengers and crew on the flight perished, including Agnieszka's chief photographer, Riku Pullman. I can only imagine how shaken Agnieszka and her husband must have been because of this situation, especially considering that Agnieszka was still such a young woman and they had a daughter who was only two years old at the time. But apparently this situation also had a very sinister effect on Jersey, who was shaken by the fact that his obsession of so many years was almost taken away just like that. He allegedly stated, when I saw small mention in the press about the catastrophe in which she could have died, those old experiences were revived. He spent weeks stalking Agnieszka's home, hiding in trees, waiting for any sign of her. Now safely back in Poland, on August 27, 1996, Agnieszka, her husband and their daughter came out of their home and got into their car. They were going to spend some nice family time together that day, which turned out to be one of Agnieszka's only off days in the year. Suddenly, unfortunately, Jersey appeared tapping on Agnieszka's window and asking her to get out and talk to him. Agnieszka apparently refused to do so and Jersey became more and more insistent. Jaroslaw eventually became impatient and got out of the car threatening to call the police. Jaroslaw of course actually had no idea of knowing of this man's inherent hatred towards him so it must have come as a surprise when Jersey took out a knife and took it to Jaroslaw's inner thigh. In fact, it later came out that when Jersey bought this specific knife, he specifically asked that the knife shouldn't be one of those that could fold in on itself. So he had some very malicious intent showing up at their house that day. Agnieszka was understandably shocked at the sight and instinctively exited the vehicle to check on her husband and stop Jersey from inflicting any more damage. Little did she know that Jersey's obsession with her would not shield her from his rage. He took the knife to her torso, inflicting four fatal wounds and then ran away. Of course, there were onlookers in the street that immediately called for help, but Agnieszka succumbed to her injuries on the way to the hospital. Due to loss of blood, her husband Jaroslaw almost succumbed to his injuries as well, but he ultimately, luckily for their daughter, did survive. As for Jersey, he called the police on himself and received a pathetic 15-year sentence. Do not ask me how this happened. This man should have gotten a life sentence, especially especially because of what I'm about to tell you next. He was released in 2012, but was convicted once again in 2014 for stabbing a man during an attempted burglary. 
of course, Agnieszka's husband, Jaroslaw, has had to spend so many years in sort of a fear-based state because there has been talk in the prisons that Jersey has stated that if he got out, he would go back to finish the job. And that just, that must be horrible. Knowing that this man only got 15 years for this. Agnieszka would have been 50 years old this year and she was tragically young when she passed. I mean, she was only 24 and she was well on her way to becoming one of the most exceptional editorial models ever. I mean, she only got more and more beautiful every year and had commercials and film roles in the pipeline. Her daughter is around 30 years old now and according to her father, she luckily doesn't remember anything about the attack that she had witnessed. And you know what, it's just it's so amazing to me everything that Agnieszka managed to accomplish by the age of 24. I mean, by the age of 24, she was an accomplished model, she was a former major international title holder, you know, she was Miss Poland, she was married, she had a beautiful daughter, she had a beautiful life, which was just so tragically taken away by this embarrassment to insults even. I definitely think that Agnieszka's memory deserves to live on and still inspire young women today. Let me know your thoughts about Agnieszka's story in the comments down below. Did you know about this? I just think it was a tragedy. I spent so much time, I spent basically my whole day yesterday researching this, looking at not only English articles, but Polish articles, translating everything into, you know, Google Translate, whatever, which is not always the most accurate, but it at least gives you an idea of the finer details that were released in Poland. Uh, it's just so tragic, honestly. But let me know what you think about this story. What do you think about the fact that this guy only got 15 years? That's the most tragic. And... Lastly, may Agnieszka's memory continue to live on and may she rest in peace.